When people buy gaming laptops, they often overlook one of the most crucial elements, the display. Most are obsessed with the hardware specs and the design of the laptop, but they don't really look into the display. I mean, this is what you look at when you're playing games, working, or watching content, and the display has to keep up with what you're using a laptop for. So in today's video, we're gonna be looking at two popular display types on gaming laptops. We got OLED and Mini LED. And I'm gonna give you guys the pros and cons of each one. That way you can make a better informed decision when you're purchasing a gaming laptop. And to do this, I have two gaming laptops in front me. We got the ROG Strix SCAR18 with the mini LED display, which I did a video on, and we also got the Zephyrus G16 with an OLED display. Both of these gaming laptops have displays that are ROG Nebula certified, which is an internal display certification standard created by ASUS ROG to define what a premium gaming laptop display should be. It basically sets minimum performance benchmarks across different criteria, and the purpose of this certification is to give buyers confidence during their laptop purchase. Purchase. The buyers can easily tell which of the products they're shopping for has a premium gaming laptop display. And we'll go over the criteria later in the video, but I do want to give a huge thanks to ASUS for providing both of these Nebula certified laptops and to Microsoft for sponsoring today's video. Discover your next favorite game with Xbox Game Pass. With a wide selection of over 400 games to choose from, you won't ever get bored. To learn more, Click the link below. I'm sure a lot of you already know the differences in technologies between these two panels, but for those of you who aren't familiar, here's a quick rundown. OLED displays use self-emissive technology. Basically, each pixel generates its own light, so pixels can turn completely off to produce perfect blacks, while on mini LEDs, they use backlit technology. It's still an LCD, but with thousands of tiny LEDs behind the screen for more precise lighting, known as local dimming. Of course, OLED has its advantages when it comes to deeper blacks, as the pixels shut off completely, giving you true blacks an amazing contrast. However, Mini LED isn't that far behind. In fact, it's very difficult to see the difference side by side. There will, however, be some haloing effect near brighter objects on the Mini LED monitor, simply because the blacks around the image are being dimmed instead of completely shutting off like it would on the OLED display. But again, it's not that noticeable. Backlight bleed is also non-existent on OLED monitors since there is no backlight at all, and it's very minimal on Mini LED. Moving on to color, both OLED and Mini LED provide exceptional vivid color and and contrast ratio. Even side by side, the differences are very minimal with slightly more saturation on the mini LED panel. I do have to mention that the Zephyrus does have a glossy coating, so the colors might pop a little bit more, but you can't go wrong with either one. The minimum contrast ratio for an ROG Nebula display is 1200 to 1 on non-HDR display and 100,000 to 1 on HDR. So if any of the laptops fall short, then it's not worthy of the ROG Nebula badge. HDR content also looks great on both displays. However, for ROG Nebula certification, it has to have Dolby Vision HDR to qualify, and for the ROG Nebula HDR badge, the display has to be VESA Display HDR 1000 certified. Those are the criteria, regardless if it's OLED, IPS, or mini LED. Now, when it comes to gaming specs, an ROG Nebula display has to have a minimum Quad HD resolution and 165 hertz refresh rate with NVIDIA G-Sync. Anything under these settings is not considered an ROG Nebula certified monitor. The Strix Score 18 has a 2560, by 1600 resolution with a 240 hertz refresh rate, while the Zephyrus has a 2560 by 1440p with the same refresh rate. So regardless of what panel technology you decide to go with, these are the minimum specs for an ROG Nebula display. Now, while the refresh rate experience is gonna be the same regardless of what panel you play on, response times is gonna greatly differ depending on the panel. Typically, OLED will always be the fastest among the rest, with response times as fast as 0.02 milliseconds, while mini LED panels will range anywhere between three to 10 milliseconds on average. The ROG Zephyrus here has a 0.2 millisecond response time, while the Strix Scar 18 has a three millisecond response time. So for competitive gaming, OLED is more superior. With the slower response times on mini LED monitors, ghosting is something that's unfortunately present. However, the severity of that will depend on the quality of the monitor and the response time itself. On the SCAR-18, it's not as noticeable. However, on the Zephyrus, it's practically non-existent, at least to the naked eye. An ROG Nebula certified display would need to have at least a three millisecond response time to receive the badge. And again, this goes for IPS, Mini LED, and OLED. Personally, I do recommend OLED over Mini LED and IPS for competitive gaming, but the OLED panels do cost a little bit more. Another certification that comes with OLED 
all ROG Nebula displays is an MUX switch that's done through NVIDIA Advanced Optimus. Basically, an MUX switch in a gaming laptop is a small chip that controls how the graphics are handled between the integrated GPU and the dedicated GPU. Basically, the purpose of this is to save battery by using the lower power iGPU whenever heavy graphics usage is not needed, like browsing the web, listening to music, or working on a document. Then if you're gaming or doing GPU intensive tasks, it will switch on, which will not only boost gaming performance, but it will also reduce latency as well, since it will avoid routing the image through the iGPU first. Content creation is also a huge focus on ROG Nebula certified displays, regardless of the panel type. It has to have at least 100% DCI-P3 color gamut, 8-bit color depth, and 500 nits of peak brightness at the very minimum. And that will differ on the monitor size and HDR content. So if you're working with color sensitive projects, an ROG Nebula display is definitely what you should be looking out for while shopping for an ROG laptop. Another factor to consider when deciding between OLED and IPS or even mini LED is long-term use and quality of life features. On OLED, there is risk of burn-in over long-term use. Mini LED doesn't have that risk. But to be fair, we've come a long way in OLED technology where OLED care is pretty standard in most, if not old monitors. It won't stop burning completely, but it will reduce its degrading effect over time with features like pixel refreshing, a logo and taskbar detection, uniform brightness, and more. However, one thing you do get on all ROG Nebula displays, regardless of the panel type, is eye comfort certification from TUV Rainland. This means all displays will have low blue light emissions, which will cause less strain on the eyes. So to recap, OLED has the best colors, deep blacks, and the fastest response times, but with the risk of burn-in and higher prices. Mini LED, on the other hand, is another very close contender with really great colors, slightly slower response times, but no burn-in risk. And these panels are much cheaper than OLED. Both have pros and cons, so it'll ultimately come down to your preference. But the key takeaway here is to look out for an ROG Nebula or Nebula HDR badge on the ROG laptops that you're shopping for to hit that minimum requirement of what a premium laptop display should be. To check out any of these laptops and to learn more about ROG Nebula, I'll drop a link to them down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in the next one.